Let's take a look at how we define process control variables when we're doing system engineering of processes. So generally, how do we create a management information system structure such that any process we define will always have the right variables for the process control that we're after? Let's just take a classic process map. Here's one for arriving at the airport, arriving at the curbside, through to the things we do to check in. We go to the airport to take a flight down to boarding a flight. So let's take a just a look at one of those process steps. Say, what kind of analysis should we be doing for every process step in every process map anytime we try to lay out a new system going through? So let's take a closer look. So we have this process map. In this case, as we, we arrive at the curbside, we have an itinerary in our baggage. Uh, we go through this process and the output is the flight confirmation, stage baggage, and a sky cap tip. So the first thing to pay attention to is that this, the inputs and outputs here are in the singular. When you look at singular inputs and outputs, that usually means you're not looking at a process, you're looking at a transaction. The process itself is intended to handle all of the transactions as they arrive. It's a subtle difference, but it's an important one for making sure you define the right control variables going through. So the first thing you do on any process map you're drawing is make sure you're actually describing the process of doing the work, not just each transaction that the process will include. So that, that requires us, in our case, to take the singular flows like itinerary and make it plural, because you'll have lots of these things coming into the process as the process handles multiple passengers all arriving for the day. So it's a very subtle difference, but a very important one as you go through. Uh, now imagine, if you will, that there's a second layer to your process map, almost another process map you could be drawing for what, what's the control process around, in this case, arriving at the curbside. I said try to imagine doing that because for reasons I'll show you later, I don't actually draw the second process map. But thinking of it as a second process map with the control layer is a good way to think about it as we go through. So the first thing you do on process control is ask yourself, what are the triggers? What are the curbside arrival triggers? What causes the arrive curbside process to wake up and be activated? The trigger in this case might be a passenger gets out of their car and arrives at the curbside. Um, that isn't necessarily an input to the process. It might be. Um, but you need to know for any given process you're designing, what would cause it to operate? If you have more than one trigger or think you have more than one trigger, it's very common that you might have more than one process going on in terms of what's arriving going in. So make sure you know what the triggers are that would cause this process to execute from a control standpoint. Then think in terms of what the dashboard would be. What kind of data or information does the operator of the arrive curbside process need as they go through. So your curbside arrival, a control process, initiates that dashboard, and the dashboard becomes, if you will, a logical input to the process, something someone can pay attention to. Thinking about driving your car, the driving the car triggers when you turn the key and start the engine. That causes the car to initialize the dashboard and present it to you as a driver for driving the car. So you have a dashboard you can look at at any given time. In every process, there should be at least a logical dashboard that you have in mind as an engineer. Whether you implement the dashboard in any automated fashion or any IT solution, that's not the point here. You're gathering requirements and trying to understand what the process is. So the dashboard could end up being nothing more than variables you train the operator of the process to keep in mind as they're working. So this isn't about how you'll deliver the dashboard. It's just about what would be on the dashboard going into this process. Then the issue becomes, as the process executes, what metrics will you collect? So the output of every process are metrics that you can capture. Again, not necessarily things that will be implemented. This isn't design. Think about what, what information becomes available as a byproduct of carrying out the process. So the metrics come out of your, your processes. Think of them as going back into uh, the, the control step that you've, you've documented for that. So the metrics are an input to the control process. Could perhaps management want to change the control level or do something different um, based on metrics that fall in certain categories. So for instance, if, you're, if you end up implementing the metrics on the process side using statistical process control, and you'll have a feedback loop to adjust the process if the process is out of control, 
uh, you might want to alert management to the in control process or what's going on in terms of those process controls. So most of your metrics have a purpose on both the dashboard and the metrics. But think of this as a feedback loop. So the trigger instantiates the dashboard. The dashboard goes into the process. Metrics come out, which go back into the control process, which update the dashboard, which come back into the arrive curbside process as they go through. So this is a cycle that's constantly continuing as the arrive curbside process is being carried out. And then lastly, the control side should be where you define how will I issue a scorecard for the overall process when it stops or when it's over or any given time. What's the management scorecard that you're going to share with management to let them know how the arrived curbside process is working? So the control variables you're dealing with are the triggers, the metrics, the dashboards, and the scorecards. And because that's fairly generic, you don't really have to show those on your process map. You should be discussing those elements whenever you develop a process map. You don't need the process map because the five elements of the map are implied by this particular heuristic. I'm just using a process map approach to illustrate the process. You don't have to draw it that way. So we're back to having just our process map and we want to define control variables for that as we go through. Um, so here's the set of control variables that I might define. What is the curbside arrival trigger? It's the traveling party of one to end passengers arrives at the curbside. Uh, what's the scorecard I eventually want to report to management on how this process is working? And maybe I want to do the data by sky cap or by flight in terms of the numbers of passengers that were processed, how many bags were processed, the average processing time, the average lead time, how many of those parties were late for, late for checking in, and how many passengers were late for checking in. Notice I'm managing parties and passengers because I might need to know that. A large pass party of 10 people all arriving late impacts the metric of late passengers more than just the, it being one party that's late. So think about the levels at which you would be defining some of these metrics. In order to come up with that scorecard, I have to be collecting metrics in the process. So for each traveling party that comes through, I might identify the sky cap that's taking care of them, the flight that they're heading for, the wait time they had to wait in line for me to get to them to, to process their bags, uh, the completion time when they were done and I send them on to the next step, the processing time within the process, an indicator of whether they're late for their flight. Maybe there's a requirement that bags get checked in 60 minutes prior to flight. So I want to know if, they're, if the passengers are showing up late for, at the curbside arrival, that will have implications for downstream processes. The number of passengers, the number of bags. So the metrics are simply capturing all of this data um, by traveling parties they go through. And then I manage the process using the dashboard. So I might have a dashboard that for every traveling party tells me the position in the queue, when they arrived, how long they've been waiting, the apparent number of passengers, the apparent number of bags. I say apparent because I might see a group of three people standing there with six bags. Uh, I might presume it's three passengers and six bags, but maybe only two of those passengers are going to be traveling and two of those bags are carry-on. Uh, so it's only the apparent numbers that I can gather on a dashboard basis until I actually process the traveling party. And then by each sky cap, I want to know how many parties they processed, um, how many passengers they've processed, the number of bags they've processed, the average passenger wait time, the maximum party wait time, the average passenger lead time, the minimum party lead time, and the average tip they received per bag and maybe the total tips they've received so far in a shift. So that's the dashboard that I'm using going through the process. So that's a lot of data. The purpose of defining your process control variables isn't to draw the second process map. Like I said, I, don't, I do not draw that process map. It's to define all these variables. So the very fact that I have the arrive curbside process defined in a process map within my requirements document means that I'm, I should also be defining all of these other variables and talking about how I will control the process going through. And then if, if it's working well, you'll find that when you take this step, you can actually find potential problems in the process map. So for instance, if my scorecard includes the number of late parties, the number of late passengers, that presumes that I'm counting people who are late and that they're checking in late. That presumes that the arrive curbside process can't just look at their itinerary, uh, but the person, the skycap doing this process has to have access to the departure schedules. So I basically had missed an input to the process that defining the metrics and the dashboards and the scorecards shows me that I'm missing. I have to be able to compare the departure schedule and their itinerary 
uh, to see what's going on when they're checking in coming through. I could just look at their itinerary, but if they're booked on a two o'clock flight and it's already one o'clock, is it really 60 minutes until their flight? The departure schedule might tell me that that flight is leaving an hour later than scheduled, and therefore they really do have two hours, right? I don't just need their itinerary. I need to know the actual departure schedules taking place within the airport. And then I should also be looking at these controls to see what failure mode could my process introduce that I need to be dealing with as an engineer as I engineer this process. So I've got a wait time metric going on. My, some of my parties and passengers are going to wait in line to get to the arrive curbside process. Uh, well, how often does that wait time cause them to be late? Suppose it's 70 minutes until their flight and they get in line to check in and it takes me 20 minutes to get to them. Now that's only 50 minutes before the flight and I flag them as, as late. I'm not going to be able to guarantee I can get their bags on the flight. Well, that turns out to be my fault because my process isn't working high enough. So my control variables have to take that kind of process into account and solve that failure mode. As my average wait time goes up, my control process perhaps should put Put more sky caps on. So I want to keep that wait time low so that my process isn't causing the very problem that the process is supposed to be helping to avoid. These are all things I get out of defining my process control variables as I go through. So the process map you've drawn with all of its steps and all of its inputs and its outputs is only the beginning of the engineering of the process. Um, our job as system engineers is to make sure we capture the triggers, the metrics, the dashboards, and the scorecards that will ultimately control that process as it goes through. So if you're writing a requirements document, uh, somewhere in or around your process maps, you should be talking about the control variables that you're working on. And as you can see, there's often quite a few of them. Again, don't bog down worrying about whether this particular set of control variables will get implemented in a particular automated tool or in any particular design strategy. This is a requirements phase tool. Your job is to figure out the variables that could and might be used to control the process. You'll decide later in design how and when you'll actually implement some of these processes going through.